वेलकम टू विंग्स ऑफ एरो एडवांस्ड एजुकेशन एंड रिसर्च ऑर्गेनाइजेशन विजिट आवर वेबसाइट www.wingsofero.in हाय फ्रेंड्स टुडे लेट्स लुक इनटू अ गेट एरो स्पेस एरोडायनेमिक सॉल्यूशन फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन For an quasi-one-dimensional isentropic supersonic flow through a divergent duct, which of the following is true in the direction of the flow? Four options. First one, both the Mach number and the static temperature increases. B, the Mach number increases and the static pressure decreases. The Mach number decreases and the static temperature increases. And the D, both the Mach number and the static pressure decreases let's see the solution now in your screen you can see a supersonic a supersonic uh, duct or divergent duct where the flow is supersonic flowing across the section so in this case let's recall the formula when the mach number is greater than 1 that is supersonic flow we know the formula v by root over gamma rt now based on this formula we can say that if the mach number increases and the temperature are inversely proportional so when the mach number increases the temperature will decrease the right option is option b to simulate the aerodynamic forces on the cylinder of 1 meter diameter due to an uniform air flow of 1 meter per second at standard temperature and pressure low speed wind tunnel experiments at same stp are conducted on 0.1 meter diameter cylinder the free stream air speed in the wind tunnel experiment should be meter per second and that should be round off of the nearest integers let's see the given data what are the given data here in the given data they have given a model ratios and the prototype so in the model they have given the diameter of 1 meter and the velocity is around 1 meter per second and they have considered in both the cases the standard temperature and pressure and in case of prototype the diameter of the cylinder is 0.1 which has been experimented in wind tunnel and from that we have to find that what is the velocity produced in the wind tunnel so let's recall the formula reynolds number reynolds number at prototype that is rho vd by rho and for model it's rho vm dm by mu here rho and mu are constant since it has been conducted under the standard temperature and pressure so let's equate both the equation and from there what we need to obtain is prototype velocity so using this two relations we can get that vm dot v dm by dp substituting the values of vm dp dm and dp we get as the velocity at the wind tunnel for a prototype we get as 10 meter per second answer is 10 meter per second next question dimensions of kinematic viscosity of a fluid where l is length and t is time are there are four options let's see the solution so recall the kinematic viscosity that is comes a mu uh, which is equals to the new that is dynamic velocity by the density so when we get the unit of the kinematic viscosity is meter square per second so from the meter square per second when we want to convert in dimensions we will get l square by t so the right answer is answer b next question for a nakka 2415 air foil of cord length c which of the following is true first option maximum camber is located at point 2c from the leading edge b maximum thickness is located at 0.15c from the leading edge c maximum camber is 0.02 of c and d maximum thickness is 0.05 of c now let's see the nomenclature of four digit series this is for four digit series the last two letters that is three and four digit uh, explains the maximum thickness to core ratio and the second digit explains the maximum thickness of the maximum camber in percentage of 
one tenth and the first digit explains the maximum camber position in the percentage of cord now in this question so we can say that two if we consider the thickness that is uh, thickness of thickness to cord ratio of this naka 2415 is 15 percentage but in this question b option you can see that they have said that it is located in the 0.15 of c so this is not correct next is they have said that about the maximum camber so maximum camber position we can say that this two percentage so from two percentage if you want to make a person with the cord we get as 0 0.02 so from here we can pick the right option is option c next question a supersonic flow in a constant area duct at a Mach number m1 encounters a ramp of angle theta 1 as shown in figure the resulting oblique shock wave in the shock angle beta 1 is then reflected from the top wall the reflection shock the turning angle is theta 2 and the shock angle is beta 2 using the weak shock solutions from the theta beta m plot shown in figure 2 to choose the correct options from the following so as in the figure shows that as the theta 1 increases the beta 1 is also increased from here it is very simple question we can directly say that beta 2 is greater than beta 1 so from here we can say that beta 1 or alternatively beta 1 is less than beta 2 so right option is option B the static pressure ratios across the stagnation normal shock is given by p2 by p1 equals to 1 plus 2 gamma by gamma plus 1 m1 square minus 1 m1 is upstream Mach number for an stationary normal shock in air gamma equals to 1.4 r equals to 287 joule kg kelvin with upstream flow conditions given by speed of 800 meter per second static temperature 300 kelvin and static pressure 1 atmosphere now we need to find the static pressure downstream of a shock is the same in atmosphere and round off to two decimal places now let's see the solution we see the given data given data they have given this formula that is p2 by p1 equals to 1 plus 2 gamma by gamma plus 1 m1 square minus 1 here in this question they have given the p1 value and that is one atmosphere and they have given the gamma value that is 1.4 and from temperature is given that is 300 kelvin from here we need to find the value of p2 now we can recall the formula of a Mach number that is m equals to v by root over gamma rt we know all the sufficient values that is v is also given at 800 meter per second r value is 287 joule per kg kelvin and t value is 300 substituting the values in the above equation we get the Mach number is about 2.3 now the solution is just we need to substitute the values in the given formula values we get that p2 equals to 1 into 1 plus 2.8 by 2.4 of mac number of 2.3 square minus 1 and when you substitute this entire values we get as p2 value of 6.006 atmosphere and we can say a round of round off of two decimal places of 6.01 and the answer ranges from 5.95 to 6.10 which is within the advisable range next question for an symmetric airfoil at an angle of attack of 10 degree assuming thin airfoil theory the magnitude of the pitching movement coefficient above the leading edge is round off to two decimal places here let's see the given data given data they have given the angle of attack in degree so from there we can convert in radian that is just multiplying into 0 0.0175 we convert in radian and let's see the solution we need to remember the formula of a pitching movement that is cm at the leading edge equals to 
pi a by 2 here they have asked in magnitude actual the formula is minus pi alpha by 2 so since the, we are doing a magnitude we have just ignored the minus so substituting the values of uh, this value that is pi into 0 0.175 of radian by 2 and we get the pitching moment about the leading age is 0 0.275 and the answer should be ranges from 0 0.24 to 0 0.3 zero and which where we are in where we are getting the answer about 0 0.28 in round of two to decimal places the span wise distribution of circulation over a finite wing of span b equals to 10 meter is they have given the formula of an elliptical distribution the gamma naught equals to 20 meter square per second and the fish stream density and the speed are 1.2 kg per meter cube and 100 meter per second respectively. The total lift is in kilonewton round off to two decimal places. Now let's see the given data first. They have given the density, they have given that is about 1.2 kg per meter cube. They have given the velocity that is 100 meter per second. They have given the circulation that is 20 meter square per second. They have given the B value that is a span, wing span value that is 10 meter. And now let's see the solution. We know the formula of this uh, lift distribution. Uh, that is pi of rho v gamma naught b by 4. So from this we simply substitute the values that is 3.14 into 1.2 into 100 into 20 into 10 divided by 4 we get as 1840 newton and in this question they have asked the answer in kilonewton in round out of two decimal places so we can write that 18 0.84 kilonewton in two in the round of uh, decimal two decimal places and where the answer ranges from 18.5 to 19.0 so which is within the advisable range